Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Market Leader Power Hour. My name is Allison Engelbrecht, and I am really excited to be bringing you some tools that you can use to help win the listings, secure those sellers, and really generate those contacts that you have in your system that you're meeting with into that listing presentation, into that getting that listing. Now, we took this call, and we're doing this call because we had a resounding request from you a couple of weeks ago in our call with Linwood Parker to know what are the actual tools that Market Leader has, what is at your fingertips that can help you secure that listing, because a lot of you are saying, hey, you know, I feel a little rusty. It's been a buyer's market for so long. We're in that shift back into a seller's market, and it's been a little while. So today we're going to be talking about some specific tools. There's a lot of tools that are available, and I, I don't have enough time to cover every one, but I know that a lot of you saw on the registration that you're going to be getting a special handout at the end of the class today with the post-class notes. So I know you're all looking forward to that. We're going to be covering anything that I don't cover and some of what I do cover. We're going to be giving you just kind of a step-by-step -step of here are the different tools that are available in your market leader system giving you a little blurb on what it is, how to use it, and where to find it, and then giving you a link to a short tutorial, if we have one, on how to use it for those of you who are more visual. And if you want um, something more extensive, if we have something that's a more robust feature, then a link to the, the most recent webinar on how to use it for a seller feature. Okay? So without further ado, let's talk about the tools that we are going to cover today. Tools we will be using. So we have our seller's market report. I know a lot of you were asking about that a few weeks ago with Linwood. What is it? How do I use it? Didn't really know I had it. Um, we're going to be talking about prospect analysis and how it's different from website analysis. And so I'm going to kind of define what I, what I mean by prospect analysis, utilizing your contact list. And some of you are going to say, oh, yeah, I get that. I, I use that tool all the time. But I think I can give you a little bit of a shift in how to use it for your sellers, and so that's what we're going to focus on today. Now, we're also going to be talking about community served and how they impact your market insider. And for those of you who are joining us from Canada or areas where you don't have a market insider, we're going to be talking about, even more importantly, how community served impacts your local tab. So don't look at my market insider word there and say, oh, market insider, I don't have it. You have the local tab, and we're going to be talking about how you can customize the content there to be um, you know, really focused on your niche market and how that's going to help you with your seller and listing presentation. OK. So I wanted to start off with a few stats, some things that you maybe know, maybe you didn't know. I was surprised by a couple of these numbers. Um, and these are NAR stats, so you can kind of look at them and say, oh, OK, I hadn't seen that yet, or oh, yeah, I saw that. But one of the ones that surprised me was that 70% of agents have a website. And what's surprising is, why isn't it 100? Right? I know everybody on this call has a website. But you are still have those people that you're a step above them because you have a website. Now, the even more interesting thing is that 56% of people are using social media to brand themselves, market their listings. And only 12% are using a real estate blog. And I know a lot of agents that we talk to say, I just don't have time for a blog. I don't have time for this. But when it comes to developing your niche market and positioning yourself as that go-to agent in a specific area, the blog and driving those people, driving that traffic, creating that presence um, can be really, really important. It can really help you to secure that listing when you're bidding against other agents. So one of the things that I wanted to share with you was the top four things that NAR says sellers are looking for. And those top four things, the most important thing to a seller was to get help with marketing their home. And that's pretty scary, right? I mean, from a, from a marketing standpoint, we know, hey, I can go and find something. But if I'm just Joe Schmo coming off the street, I don't really know how to make sure people see my house. How do I make sure that it's getting to the right buyer? How do I make sure people are finding me? So that's 25% said that was, their, that was what they needed help with. That was the most important thing that they were looking for from an agent. Now, of that, they also were looking for a specific time frame, right, 20%. And Linwood covered that. He had a great analogy um, and a little piece that he added to his listing presentation, a little paper that basically gave them a timeline. And in the conversation that he had with his seller, he would talk about 
what you know what's your goal right he's doing he's using his listening and he's looking at what is your goal when do you need to sell by where when do you need to buy where are you going what is the purpose of this and then backing that up and basically creating his goal set based on when do, when do I have to list this home in order to get my seller into a home on their deadline. So that's that understanding the market, understanding how much inventory you have, understanding how quickly things are, are switching over and getting sold, right? And that's something that only you as an agent can provide to your sellers. So giving them that little sheet of paper. Now helping them price correctly and helping them find the right buyer, those were also super, super important to our sellers. So if we can take those four main concerns, those four things are the most important things for our sellers, and identify how the market leader system or how the tools that you have in your market leader system can help you accomplish touching on each one of those things, it's going to set your listing presentation apart. It's going to give you that extra edge because you know that you're touching those main concerns that your sellers have just based on these statistics. So let's talk about prospect analysis because I think this is kind of the basis for talking with a client. Again, a seller is looking for how are you going to sell their home? Who's going to buy my home? Where, where are the buyers? How do I get my house in front of them? And this is a super, super easy thing that I think people maybe gloss over or didn't even think to use the contact list like this. What this image is of is it's the contact list. And what that contact list allows you to do is actually sort and filter your whole database based on buying criteria. Buying criteria, that's what your sellers are looking for. Who's going to buy? How do I find those buyers? So let's take a look at where you actually find this because I think a lot of you are like, well, I use that. That's great. How do I get there? What are you talking about? So with, the, with this contact, we're looking at the contacts list, right? and we're seeing our contacts, what I would suggest that you do is you open up the more search options. Now we've recently upgraded this. I know you guys are using this, but in case you're like, oh, it just looks a little different, you do have a new way of searching here. Now I'm going to pull out my solds because I don't really care that much about my solds if I'm looking for my buyers, right? But I am interested in all of these different contacts. What I'm also interested in is this looking in section. So if I'm looking, if I have a new seller in Kirkland, I'm going to type in Kirkland here. And I'm going to run my search. So it's just taken me less than a minute to find that I have 25 contacts in my database that are looking in Kirkland. That's a great, that's really kind of one of those little like aha moments when you think about having that conversation with the seller. Hey, Mr. Seller, I'm really grateful that I had a chance to come in and meet with you today or in an email. You're saying something, thank you for allowing me to provide you some information. Just wanted you to know, even before we talk about listing your home, even before we talk about um, you know, who is going to be doing this, I want you to know that I'm already working for you because I already have 25 people who are looking in your area. I have 25 buyers on my website right now searching listings in Kirkland. I am a Kirkland resource. You should be using me. I should list your home because I can get you in front of those buyers faster, right? This is an easy, easy way for you to do this, and, you, and you're sorting and organizing your whole database based on a couple of clicks. So again, it's just a matter of pulling out your solds, typing in the looking in section, and clicking search. Now don't forget, when you're done with this, you always want to reset your search. That pulls up all of your contacts again. Sometimes people get stuck there. But by doing that, then you can go in and you can search other, other search criteria and it kind of resets everything for you. Okay. So now that I've got this information, I know that I've got 25 contacts who are looking in Kirkland and now I want to get that information out to my new seller. Right Now, one of the things that Linwood talked about last week and I think is an underutilized tool is the seller's market report. Now, the seller's market report specifically is like a web version of a CMA. Okay? It's just really, really quick. It's designed to be fast. It's not designed to replace that personal conversation that you're having in the living room or at the kitchen table with your seller. This is designed to be something that you can 
respond quickly. You can use the numbers that you have and get them some information and give them a broad idea of what's on the market, what's selling, what's comparable, and say, hey, let's, I'm excited to meet with you. I'll bring you some more detailed and more narrowed down price range for you in our meeting, right? So the seller's market report has some great, great tools. And it's a little bit hidden. So if you didn't know about it, maybe you aren't using it. So in the seller's market report, and I'm just going to update here. In the seller's market report, we're going to basically look for a specific contact, because I want to send this to somebody specific. And I'm going to choose a contact that I've prepped for you guys so we can see some good information. Now, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for this action gear or this action icon. I've got that, that gear in the dashboard. I've got it in the contacts. I can click here or I can click on the name and I've got this action gear here. So no matter where you are, if you're working on a contact, you have the ability to find the send seller's market report. And the Send Seller's Market Report opens up a new screen. And this screen just pops up right in the middle of your, your screen here. And it basically says Send Seller's Market Report. Now, the first thing that you're going to see here, hopefully, is the two different types of delivery options. We have the download PDF or the email. Now, I want to call out to you guys that I'm the kind of person who really likes to work smarter, not harder. I'm, you know, I prefer to reuse something if I can. And so what I would suggest as a best practice is to always, always, always choose the download PDF first. And the reason we're going to do this is because we want to reuse our work. I don't want to have to create this twice. And using the download PDF allows me to save a hard copy or a soft copy to my computer, print it out before I actually send the email off. Okay, so always create that download PDF, and that way we can reuse our work. Now, I've assigned, this is already assigned to Adam, and because his address was already entered into his contract record, it automatically populates here. And he has two addresses, so he can go with either one of these addresses. And I can switch back and forth if I need to. Now, if I don't have an address in here, that's okay. I can go ahead and add the address in right here. Now I'm going to have the bedrooms, the bathrooms, and the price range. The price range is required to get started. And I know a lot of agents that I talk to are like, wait, wait, I can't do a price range until I've actually looked at properties. I need to do some comparisons before I provide a price range. And that's OK. This is not set in stone. The price range allows us to get into kind of the process here. And so give it your best guess. Go ahead and leave it broad. We can come back and we can edit it down. And it still is not going to take that much time to do that work. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put in, um, let's do 420. Get all my zeros in there. Two, 475. You can see I've already done this here. It's remembering. And we click Continue. Now the next screen that comes up after I click continue is the introductory paragraph. Now this paragraph is set up already written. You can absolutely leave it as is. You can edit it to your heart's content. You can see that it's built into a WYSIWYG editor. So it's a what you see is what you get. I can bold what I want. I can italicize. I can add. I can indent. I can do whatever I need to do. In this case, I'm just going to edit the font just so that you can see the changes take place. And then once that font is updated, I'm going to click Continue. Now I kind of get into the fun part. Because now I'm actually going to be looking at active properties that are going to be comparable, right? I want to find my comparisons. I can enter cities, neighborhoods, or zips. I'm going to use zips because I just think it's easier for today's uh, demonstration. Now this property in question happens to fit on the border between two different um, cities. And so I'm going to put both in, choose my single family. I'm just going through and entering the information in here. And we're going to go with, let's do our 425. 
because prices are rising here, to, um, let's do 500. Okay. And we're going to run our search. So this looks pretty similar, right, to a search that maybe you do in your search MLS or anywhere else in your market leader system. I can hover over the images and I can select them. I can choose up to three different images here. And these would be included in my presentation, in my, in my email. Now, just like your contacts list, this header row is sortable. So I can sort by, I currently have it sorted by zip. I can change it to square footage because I need to make sure that I'm, you know, matching as, much, as closely as possible. And we're going to put in our three properties and click continue. Now, if you have connection to MLS, that is going to work fantastically. If you don't have a connection to the MLS here, you will be able to add in some manually entry, entered um, sold. So don't worry if you're saying, but I don't have MLS coverage here. That's OK. You can still use this feature. You can still use this, um, this report. It still works just great. And if you are coming in that way, then you're just going to be doing a manual entry on your your new listings for the actives and the solds. Now the sold listings are going to come off of public data. And public data is going to be pulling in from Market Insider. So the, the rule of thumb is if you have Market Insider, you can use this um, sold search of public data. If you don't have Market Insider, you can change the radial right here to manually entered. And you can update the sold data there. You can just add in your own. You can put in whichever ones that are coming up on your MLS. Now, for today's, for today's purposes, we're going to go ahead and use the public data. Same thing here. I'm going to just go ahead and add in my bedrooms, my bathrooms, my price range. Now, we're looking six to eight months back, obviously, so we need to drop the price a little bit because prices are going up quite quickly here again. And with the zip codes, we actually are going to do it a little different. We're going to use the comma space to add multiple zip codes. So if you have multiple zip codes in the seller's section, in the, in, you're adding those in, it's the comma space. In the buyer's section, in the, the active listings, it's each one you do in separately. Choosing my property type is super easy. And then I just run my search. And... I'm going to back up here and do this one more time because I ran into this yesterday that when I moved over, um, if your minimum bedrooms automatically doesn't populate for you, then you might want to back up and come in again because it'll have trouble actually running the search. So just a little tip that I found out um, as I was testing this for you guys. Okay, so we're going to do 400 to 500. Get our zip codes in there. Single family and search. OK, so I know you guys are catching up with me in the visuals. So I'm going to give you just a second so you can see what exactly I'm looking at. Now, with the seller's portion, because it's public data, it's sold properties, there are no pictures. OK, we don't want to be creepy. Um, so these are just going to be pure data. And basically, we're going to be using that ability to sort, again, to identify the best properties to include. So I'm going to start with the sold date, and you can click. When you double click, it changes the order, OK? So from uh, nearest to farthest or farthest to nearest. And we'll go ahead and include that one. Actually, let's do this one. And let's do our square footage. And this is just allowing me to choose rather quickly just some some comparables based on specific price and bedrooms and bathrooms and square footage. OK. And then we'll click Continue. Now, this is a customizable conclusion or a summary section that you can add. And the cool thing about the summary section is, remember, we were, we were talking about that prospect analysis. I have 25 contacts. I have 25 buyers looking in Kirkland. Um, those buyers, I can put them in front of your home in minutes as soon as we are listed, right? That's a great opportunity. That's something that you can include in your conclusion, in your summary. 
Now, I'm going to pull up a quick little piece that I did, and I'll be including this in the, um, in the post class notes. So if you guys are interested in kind of getting a head start on what you might, can, might include, you can use this as a base point. If you hate it, I'm not offended. That's OK. Uh, and again, I'm going to go ahead and just update the font size so it's just a little bit easier to read. Now, if you're interested in knowing, well, hey, I know I've got 25 contacts in Kirkland, but what about the rest of my website? How can I, you know, I need to have a little bit more numbers here. I need, my, I need to make myself look a little bit better, right, because I'm brand new to Market Leader, or I don't have a lot of traffic yet, or I just started a few months ago. Um, those kinds of, that's okay, because you can also look at this section here, and you can see how many people, how many contacts total you have in your system, and then also, what are, you know, what is in general, people who have market leader in your area, how many contacts are going to be looking at this? How many contacts are going to be getting this update? So the second one is not your contacts. The second one is going to be local agents, not you, who are going to be updated through market leader. Okay? So this is you here, and this is other agents. So, Mr. Seller, I'm going to be able to market your home much better because I have this network of agents that are going to see your home as soon as that listing goes on the market. It's going to go out to all of their, their clients. They're going to get some special emails. I have 25 people on my site already who are looking in your area. Do you want to use me? Now, this is set up initially. Remember, we set this up to go out as a print piece. So we're going to save this. It's going to save as Adobe. So we just want to make sure you have that already um, already saved. And this is that piece. I, I want to save it because I don't want to have to do my work again if I need to print it at some point down in the future. So save it on a file in your computer, print it out, and stick it in your file folder. I know a lot of you are still using um, you know, hard copy files, and you've got your little folder set up for all of your clients, and that's fantastic. This is something that would go into that file. So I can print that. I can save it, whatever I need to do. And then super easy, so here's my, here's my report. I know you guys are still catching up with me. So my report right here, and you can see the comparable properties that are sold. And then down here, I've got my estimate, and I've got my conclusion. Now, all of a sudden, I'm looking at this thing, oh, geez, that 420 to 475 seems a little broad. And that's okay, right? If I want to send it out broad, that's okay because I haven't necessarily met this person yet. Maybe I'm sending this early or before the listing presentation. And maybe I want to keep it broad. Maybe I don't want that, you know, I want to make sure that I have an opportunity to come in and hone that number for them. And that's great. But if you do want to have something that's a little tighter, a little narrower, you can go back. So we're just going to click back. And you guys probably won't keep up with me as I'm, as I'm popping back, but I'm going to pop all the way back to the, to the front page of this report. And from the front page, I have two things that I get to do. One, I'm going to change it to an email form now. So I've saved it, I've printed it, I've done what I need to do. I'm reusing my work so I don't have to spend time doing this again. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to maybe, maybe I want to update the price point for the email. Okay, and I can just hand write it in on the PDF. So I can do, so let's do 445. Whoops. 445 to 475, and then I just click continue. Everything that I did, all of the changes that I made, everything in my seller's market report is all saved. I don't have to go back in and recreate it. I don't have to go back in and check all the boxes. It's already checked, it's already done. All the edits that I did in my conclusion, everything is done. I just have to go in, confirm that my changes were saved as far as my price range, and you'll see the blue button down here at the bottom is a send and not a save now. So I can go ahead and click send, and my seller's mark report is out the door. So super, super easy to do, and I'm back to my contact. Okay? Now, those of you who are saying, this is fantastic, I was able to provide a little bit more detail, I was able to say, hey, I am the agent for you because I focus on this is my niche market. 
this is how I market myself. This is where I'm really putting my presence out there. This is how I'm generating those clients. We also have those people that we talk to who get really, really excited about the numbers. They really like that. Not everybody's like that. <laughs> but some people get really excited about the numbers, right? We know those people. We have those conversations. So how do you provide that? Market Leader has that available for you as well. So let's look at what that looks like. There's our report. Website analytics. Now, some, most, a lot of people, a lot of agents that we talk with, this, this gets really deep. And we understand that. Website analytics is a tool that just has so much information, sometimes it's just like, I don't know where to begin. And so in providing this information, we are going to dive in. I'm going to show you my, my two favorite tools, my two favorite places to go. I'm going to ignore the rest. I'm going to show, me, show you the two favorite things I use in website analytics. And then I'm going to give you a link to an actual webinar that we did on how to really leverage website analytics with the sellers, with your sellers, because there's a lot to, that goes into website analytics. Now, if you haven't used website analytics before, you're going to go, it's the same section, we're in admin, we click on website analytics, but if you haven't used it, you are going to need to accept the terms and conditions. And there's no payment for this, it's all included in your system. It's, you know, there's nothing extra you have to do. The terms and conditions, the I agree here, this is just basically saying that we're not big brother doing this without your permission. It's saying, yes, I approve for you to analyze the people who are coming to my website and provide me with the statistics that go along with that. I want to know how many people are looking and what pages they're looking at. Okay? Now, this is a, this is a pro feature. And for those of you who are on a Realty Generator, um, you can still utilize this feature. You'll just want to talk to your broker to get these, um, get access to these tools or get printouts of these tools. Um, but it's still an excellent piece to use in your listing presentation. And on a broker level, you're obviously going to have some really fun numbers to show to your clients. So let's look at the admin. And I'm going to wait for you guys to catch up with me here. So we're on admin, and we're going to look at website analytics. And one of my favorite things about website analytics is that if it's taking time to load, it gives you a funny little thing. I know it has no relation, but as you guys are catching up, um, <laughs> it'll give you a little saying like yada yada or anything like that. So it's kind of one of those little flashy things that you get. Now, I'm pretty fast, and I think everybody is on board with getting through the statistics and getting through the numbers quickly. So the first place we're going to go is we're going to go to the rocket ship. Okay, Start with the rocket. We're all good. So click hover. You don't have to click on the rocket. You just hover over it. I'm not clicking on anything. If I move off of it, it goes away. This is the launch pad. This is the, the basis for your system. But as I just move and hover over it, before I've clicked on anything, it comes back. And I can then choose the different pieces that I want to look at. So as it's hovered, I'm going to scroll down to where it says global stats. Now, this is my all-time favorite report. And I think it's because I'm more of a visual person. And I think a lot of people are visual people, but I think I am even more so. So for those of you who are saying, I'd really like to provide stats, but I know a lot of times as I'm talking to people, they're kind of glazing over, right? And I, I want to be able to provide that. I want them to be able to think about that. But they're glazing over as I'm, as I'm doing it, and it's, it's not really, I don't, I don't know if I should go there. This is one of those reports that you can go there with. So what am I looking at here? It's a map, right? And the map is basically telling me how many people are visiting my site from across the country. Now, depending on what marketing efforts you're doing, these numbers can be astonishing. The first thing that I would suggest that you do is come up here, and I just did this today, so it's still um, updated. It defaults to today, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, and it will show me a bunch of zeros. And that's okay, because it's today. It's 10.30 in the morning Pacific time. So it shows you a bunch of zeros when you click go. The date range, I can choose 
to go year to date. It just gives me better numbers, right? It's showing what I'm doing this year, and that's okay. Hey, Mr. Customer, this year so far I'm generating X number of, of hits. This is my reach. I'm getting across the country. People are looking to me as a resource for this area, right? Because you know what you're blogging about. You know why people are coming here. You know the areas that you're promoting. You know what you're focused on in your website. These are the, this is how you kind of back that up and say, this is where those leads are going, right? I'm, I'm really focused on Kirkland. I do all of my conversations around Kirkland Juanita. Mr. Customer in Juanita, Mr. Seller in Juanita, I am the person, I am the resource, because look at how many people across the country are coming to web, my website based on Juanita. Now, the longer your site's been up, the more reporting you're going to have, the better numbers you're going to have, the longer the year is going, obviously the better the numbers. It just makes for really fun conversations. So choose your date. I'm just choosing January 1st. Click the Go button, and it updates. Now, for those of you in Canada saying, but I don't have it, you do. You can change it to Canada. So you have the option of doing this as well. So you're probably going to have you actually might have some people in the US looking to move to Canada, so you might want to include both. This is a printable report, guys. So even if you don't want to bring your laptop or your iPad or your tablet with you, this is a printable report. And it can, it's just a fun image to be able to share your reach, how you are connecting online with consumers. Now, the other thing that I really like to look at, and this is for those people who are more analytical. They want more numbers. They want to really see what you're doing. And you know the age, you know the, the sellers I'm talking about. They're the ones who are maybe a little more high maintenance. They're the ones who are saying, but I want to see what you're talking about. I want to see how are you focused on my home specifically. Well, if you go into your analytics, again, hover over that rocket, and you can go to your popular pages. From the popular pages, you can scroll down and you can find their listing. So when you see a listing MLS ID, property ID, this is a specific listing. And you can look at it and say, I've had seven people, or seven views, excuse me, seven times this property has been viewed, and one person has been viewing it. One person viewed this property seven times. That's pretty astonishing. It's pretty cool. So this is a great tool for you to be able to take it to that next level, that, that seller who's getting anxious, right? Mr. Seller, I can provide you with this kind of information. This is the kind of, of service that I provide to all of my clients. Now, I've gotten a couple of questions about um, the sold data. And just to clarify, sold data is public records. It's not from the MLS. So public records take a little bit more time to update into the system. So if you are looking for something that just sold, so we're talking again about the um, we're talking again about that seller's market report. If it's a sold if it's sold data, it's coming from public records. So it does take time for that public record to update. You can absolutely manually add something that just sold yesterday, you're welcome to do that. You won't be able to do both at the same time. So you'll have to choose between, am I going to manually add or am I going to use public records? OK. All right, so this is, again, one of those pieces when you need to go a little more in depth, getting back to this individual listing number. All right, so we've got our information. We are talking to our our seller about how we are really marketing ourselves, how we are generating buyers in their area. We're talking about how working with us is going to help them to market their home better. Because again, the number one thing that our sellers are looking for is that they we are going to be marketing their home. Like that's the scariest part for them. That's what they need help with. So if we can focus on that, then that's where they're going to be most comfortable. So how can you market your home? Now, I showed you the statistics that only 12% are using a real estate blog. That's one way to do it, right? A lot of agents are not doing real estate blogs. I highly suggest that if you aren't in involved in that, that you start getting involved. Something as easy as Active Rain, where you can just start to watch 
if you're still a little nervous about it, I've talked with some of our most um, successful active rain bloggers. And, you know, Debbie Reynolds, for example, it took her over a year from when she actually bought her active rain subscription um, before she actually started using it. I was like, really, a year? And she's like, yeah, well, I got scared. <laughs> okay, so it took her a while, and that's okay. But getting yourself in that mindset of starting to talk about your community, start with your community served. If the blog is a little too much, start with your community served. You already have it in your system. It's already there, and you can start kind of doing that here. So what exactly is community served? And this community served is what is going to show up on the main page of your website. It is a list of communities. You get to choose what they're called. And it basically just highlights your niche. The community served is going to impact your Market Insider. Because the last community, or the last zip code you add in your community served becomes the default zip code for your Market Insider searches. So if somebody is not signed up on a specific zip code search and they just go to Market Insider, it's going to start with the default zip code that you chose, which is the last zip code that you entered. And I'll show you how to make sure that you can choose which zip code you want entered. Now, if you don't have Market Insider and you're using the local tab, community served is even more important for you. So perk up because the, the Market Insider, if you're using that local tab, this community content is blank. It's blank unless you edit it and, con and add that content. With Market Insider, you get some reports, and that kind of fills in for you. But with the local tab, you get to choose what you show there. So let's look at what, what kind of things would we want to choose. Well, if you want to try and have some things like Market Insider or some things that might be of interest to your sellers, then let's talk about, within the community serve, adding price trends. Let's talk about adding medium list price, median days on the market. Market Insider updates once a month-ish. So if you think about that, if you're doing this manually for a local tab, your local page, if you, just choose, if you did this once a month, or if you had somebody do this, like maybe an admin or somebody at your office, hey, can you update this information? They're already getting it in, or they can look at it online um, on the MLS. You can get all of this information just putting in the text, right? It doesn't have to be super fancy. We don't need charts and graphs on a local tab. I mean, it's great if you want to. But you can just list out the information. People who are looking here are just going to want to kind of browse through this information. They aren't going to be looking specifically for, you know, deep diving content, OK? There are other places that they can get that on your site, um, should you choose to do that. So with community served, we're, again, defining that niche, defining that for your seller, saying, Mr. Seller, use me because this is where I'm driving my traffic. I'm using this aspect of my system. So where to find that? How do I edit that? Now, I hope, hopefully, a good portion of you already know this, but you're going to go into your admin under website. And under website, you're going to go to community served. Now, we have a whole slew of communities in here. Um, so it's a little more than maybe um, most of you have. But if you have more than me, I am really proud of you. <laughs> the community serve can be added down here. So it's super easy. You click on this button, and it pulls up a community, a blank community. So you can edit to your heart's content, add as many communities as you would like. And adding that community is going to create that link on your home page to your community serve to actually pull and run listings, run the active listings on your website. It's just an easy way for, for your clients, your buyers, to find their listings. And for your sellers, once you've got this information in, let's find Juanita, because I've updated that one. So here's Juanita. I can go in and I can edit this at any time. Oh, my Juanita. All of my content's gone. Um, OK. So with Juanita, my content was there like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so all you do is you just click on Edit here. Ah, there we go. And you can add in as much or as little content here as you'd like. 
So in this case, I put in some blurb, living in Juanita is a little bit of waterfront fun, right? Growing neighborhood, I'm giving some content description, wonder about the amenities, giving some of the amenities in here. I could also put in that information that um, maybe we have in the Market Insider, right? So putting in, hey, pricing trends are going up, they're going down. Uh, median list price for a home in Juanita is this. Median days on the market is this. There are X number of active listings. Majority of properties in Juanita are, you know, owned. X number or X percentage is rented. All of those things can be added in here to make this a more robust part of your system. So adding this is going to help your local tab. And for those of you who have Market Insider saying, oh, I'm, I don't need to do this, you do. Maybe you don't need to put in the median days on the market and the pricing trends and all that, but I highly, highly suggest that you still add content in here because this content is still seen by search engines even though it's not seen specifically by your, your clients, because Market Insider is taking over that space, but the search engines still see this. So this is only going to help you in generating more traffic to your site, generating more interest in these specific communities, giving you more opportunity, and hey, to practice on maybe writing some content about your community, right? If it's just a matter of getting used to it, that's where you go. And if you are doing a real estate blog, if you are doing social media, you can link those generic uh, social media contents about Juanita, about Kirkland, about Totem Lake, Finn Hill, whatever community it is. You can link those back to these community surf pages. You can link them back to search results for those communities, right? All of those things driving traffic back to your site and helping you to show sellers that you are the stopping point for buyers because that's what they're looking for. They need to find the buyers, right? Okay, preaching to the choir a little bit. <laughs> Thank you for, for letting me do that. Now, let's talk about some of the other features that you have. Okay, because we, we don't have all day to tell you all the features. How many of you knew that you have single property websites? Okay, and of those people who knew, how many knew that you had 200 free single property websites? So creating a single property website and maybe putting a link to that single property website on your community page. Hey, Mr. Seller, not only are you going to be featured on my home page, your home is going to be featured on my home page, but also a single property website that I build for you is going to be featured on the community page of special homes in this community. These are services that I provide to you as, a, as one of my clients as a seller. The Marketing Center has amazing things in it. Seller's guides, if you're looking for something as far as a seller's guide or something to put together a handoff to your sellers, flyers, newsletters, if you have content that you like to use in your listing presentation, think about maybe uploading it into the Marketing Center as a flyer or a newsletter so that you have access to it. So when Fido grabs that, a listing presentation that you just handed to your seller and starts tearing it to shreds, you can say, great, uh, can I borrow your printer, right? And you can print that right off and hand them another copy. Handing it there, just listed postcards, just sold postcards, open house postcards, special invitation open houses, you know, the weekend before, the day before the listing goes on the market, maybe you host a special open house and you send a postcard or an e-postcard to all of your buyers in Kirkland saying, special preview, come and visit, right? Seller campaigns, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, featured listings, we just talked about that. Craigslist, I know a lot of you are using Craigslist. Linking to your market leader website to individual specific properties as well as maybe social media links on things that are community driven. Because what, what, what is it that they're looking for again? What do sellers want? What do they want? They want the buyers. And we get a lot, of, whenever we do these seller pieces and we're talking about sellers and generating seller listings, a lot of times we get people, when are you going to get to the seller focused pieces? Well, sellers care about the buyers. 
So for those of you who are, are um, act actively asking questions, tell me what movie this is from. <laughs> what movie are we talking about here? And if that one didn't help you, showing them the buyers, right? Because that's what it's all about. It's using your market leader system to support that you already have access to the buyers. Yep. <laughs> awesome, everybody. I think it took you guys a little bit of time to find your chat. <laughs> OK. So when we talk about you know, doing these, talking about the different tools and features you have in your system to help you with your sellers, to help you with your listing presentations, we're talking about promoting to your listings the buyer presence that you have. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's how I'm going to market. Here's how I'm going to find those buyers for you. Here's how I'm going to help you to identify those pain points that you have, the seller has, and I'm going to address them. Here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to market your I'm going to market your listing with these tools that I have in my marketing center. I'm going to be blogging about your listing. I'm going to be driving traffic back to my website. I'm going to be able to track who's looking at your, or at your listing. I'm going to be able to tell you what I'm doing. If that matters to you, I can tell you exactly where your, where your buyers are coming from. Okay. Now, one of the things that came up, and I'm going to rush this a little bit. One of the things that came up in our calls a couple weeks ago was, I, I really kind of need to look at what what I can do to kind of freshen up my listing presentation. It's been a while. I'm feeling a little rusty. So what I really like for you to think about is how can you love your listing presentation? What can you do? What tools do you have in your market leader that you want to try incorporating into your listing, into your next listing presentation? What things are you going to print off? Are you going to print off copies of your marketing pieces? Your just listed postcards, your just sold postcards? Are you going to print off some of the email marketing that you're going to do so that your seller can see, here's my, here's my marketing process. Here is a copy of my marketing campaign. You know, here's some ideas that I use. Now, I would like to propose that for those of you who are on the call today, give me some suggestions on what your favorite piece is in your listing presentation. I've added a question to the survey today so that you guys can tell me what is the favorite thing that you use in your listing presentation. And if you give me permission, I'll go ahead and include that in the post-class notes today. So I'm going to be putting together kind of a, here's, you know, here's some things that to think about. If you have this in your listing presentation, great. I'm sure you have a whole slew of this. But maybe some of those ideas are like, hey, I took that out, and I don't know why I took that out, but I'm going to try it again. Or I never thought about doing that. So I know all of you are doing cover letters. I know you're all doing thank yous. Right? We all thank you. <laughs> thank, I just had a listing presentation done this weekend, and it was great because the cover letter was a letter of intention with a thank you for letting her come and show, you know, do the presentation. Um, do you guys put in how the brokerage or franchise helps your buyers? I know a lot of agents do. How about adding in there how your online marketing helps you find buyers? Right? Here's my online strategy. Here's my marketing strategy. What's in your CMA? How much is that? Is it five pages? Is it 50 pages? Is it one page? Do you provide tips for sellers? I always thought it would be a really great idea to provide kind of a step-by-step -step of here's what I need to do as a seller. Here's a timeline, right? I kind of think of it and I kind of think of it like preparing for Thanksgiving dinner, right? X number of days out, I need to start thawing my turkey. <laughs> And maybe that's not a great example, but I kind of it makes me laugh when I think about that because if I'm getting ready to sell my home, how many days out, how many months out do I need to start thinking about repairs, right? How many days out do I need to start thinking about how am I going to keep my house clean for my two small children and my husband, right? Those are the kinds of things that maybe a checklist might work. One of the things that I thought was really cool was because I was a um, you know, a referral, or not a referral, but a, um, a past client of this agent, 
she was actually able to provide me the net proceeds based on a few selling prices. And I was just stunned by that because I'd never seen that before. So she worked out a couple of um, numbers. If you sell at this price, when you walk away from the table after paying for everything, you're going to have this dollar amount in your pocket. I was like, heck yeah, that's what I want to see because I need to turn around and buy a house. And she knows that I'm going to buy a house from her. So I was like, okay, well, that, that helps me identify what I'm going to be looking for. And to keep my husband motivated, she's sending us eye candy, right? So what are you including in your listing presentation? Some things in your CMA, right? Maybe a map layout of where the, the compares are. Tax assessor's information I'm sure you guys are providing. Are you guys providing anything different? What about tips for your sellers? How do showings work? What is commission? How does that work? Linwood gave a great example last week of giving people a visual with the business cards and how commissions work. You know, taking a, putting those six business cards down, sliding three away, and then talking about where all the money goes. How about just what it means to work with an agent? All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic week. Bye.